things are happening, man. God is on the move, and we're in the groove. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, and glory. And Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now, call is associated with invited. So they were invited for a new life. Amen? Not only a new life, but a new existence. A new reality. A life to execute an eternal purpose. We exist to fulfill someone else's purpose at a divine level. That's what called is. You are called. There's, there, it's the kingdom call. We are in a what they call a kingdom call. Call to the kingdom. And in this calling to the kingdom... God is saying, I'm inviting you for a new life. I'm inviting you for a new existence. I'm inviting you to live into a new reality, a true reality. I'm inviting you to escape a false reality. I'm giving you the opportunity so that you no longer live for yourself anymore, but you are going to execute an eternal purpose. So we execute a purpose for someone else called Christ, Jesus the Christ. See, again, you are called to fulfill his purpose, not ours anymore. This is where many people struggle because they're still trying to fulfill their own purposes. Now, we know call is associated with battle, amen? And, and, and our purpose is what? To destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many souls as possible. And these are things that we've heard over and over and over. But there is a kingdom call right now that has gone forth like never before. It is great. There is salvation call all over the world. You don't have to see revival. You know it's there. Amen. Everybody can sense that there's a draw from God. There's the awakening. Many people are coming out of darkness into the light. Many. Unfortunately, there are still those who are still going back into darkness from the light because they've been taken captive, deceptive. In Colossians chapter 1, for those who are called, again, we exist to fulfill the kingdom purpose, not ourselves anymore. And this is where people falter because they begin to fight for their life instead of surrender it. And when you begin to fight for your life, you interfere with God's divine intervention. I'll never forget when I had a mandatory sentence. I had a minimum of four years to do, mandatory. The Lord said, I'll be your attorney. I went to the courtroom. He said, don't say anything. And I didn't. Of course, I wanted to tell everybody I was a brand new creation. It wasn't me that did those things. I mean, you might have had my fingerprints and on video and everything else and witnesses against me, but it wasn't me. I'm brand new. I'm a new creation. I ex I'm a new existence. I wouldn't dare do those things I used to do. <laughs> I have a new heart, a new spirit, a new way of thinking, 
a new way of life. I don't live for myself no more. I have a new purpose. Are you trying to tell the judge that? It's like you for being crazy. So the Lord said, Guy, be quiet. And I did. And he looked at us and said, whatever. Mandatory sentence. Probation. And I walked out of that courtroom. And I was supposed to do four years, I only did two. And I had favor all the way through. Because I was no longer living for me. I wasn't living for my purpose. I had no purpose. My purpose was whatever thing he wanted. That's my purpose. What do you want? You want me to go to jail? I'll preach in jail. I'll tell everybody about you. Wherever you want me to go. So he put me in a coat. For 30 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's got a sense of humor. Anyways, he had a purpose. It wasn't mine anymore. Okay, what do you want? See, when you ask God, what do you want? You better be careful. What do, you want to, what do you want me to do, Lord? I'll do anything. Oh, I'll just do anything, whatever you want me to do but that. And he don't work that way. <laughs> He'll put you back on the wheel until you finally say, okay, Lord. You know? He probably said that to Noah. <laughs> Think about Noah. I mean, uh, yeah, Noah who had to build the ark, right? Come on, man. Look how long it took him to build that ark. His neighbors thought he was nuts. Amen? And what did the Lord tell him? Listen, Noah. He started complaining. He said, how long can you tread water, Noah? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Let's speak it. For this reason we also... Since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Well, if you're going to be filled with the knowledge of his will, it means you've got to do his purpose. He doesn't give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do our purpose. He gives us to do his purpose. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of God of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood and forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things Consistent. So if he's before all things, he knows everything that's going to happen. Amen. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. He has qualified us to partake of his presence of light into his kingdom of purpose. I want to say that again. He's qualified us to partake of his presence of light into his kingdom of purpose. That's why we have a kingdom call. We are no longer fulfilling our purpose. We're fulfilling his purpose. Amen? And I think that's, again, this is where many times people struggle. They, they lose sight when trials and tribulations come, they begin to try to fulfill their purpose instead of God's purpose. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Kingdom call. You have been drafted into the kingdom. <laughs> and you got to go through Holy Ghost boot camp. This is where people, some people don't want to go through Holy Ghost boot camp. They just want to go out and serve God. And then they get their butt kicked. Because they, they don't know spiritual warfare or understand discipleship. That's why, why did Jesus say go out and disciple? Amen? So people can know to be an example of Christ. You cannot be successful as a warrior of Christ without being discipled. We must be mentored, tutored, guided, and learn the voice of God and, the vo and His presence. So many people, they don't get that. They come into places and they want their will to be done in there instead of God's will. Then I can't handle it. When, you, when God asks you, are you willing to do whatever it takes? <laughs> that means everything. Everything. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Not just because when you feel like it. It's especially when you don't feel like it. That's when it's accounted credit to you. It's not when you feel like it. It's when you don't feel like it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, glory. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. Let's speak. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Not many are called. Not many are invited. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Mm. Again, we are called to battle, spiritual battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. Our destiny is to infiltrate the world system, rescue as many souls, and disciple as many souls. So they become warriors. Amen. That's kingdom call. 2 Timothy 1, verse 8. Therefore what? Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not carnal, holy. Not according to our works, but according to his own what? Purpose. And grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So you were chosen before time began to be here at this time in this realm to live in darkness for a period of time of a false reality, then to be removed and called out of the false reality into the true reality, to be discipled and come to the end of ourselves, amen, so Christ can have his way and so that we would cooperate with his purpose and no longer our own. Again, our new existence is for his purpose. That's it. That's it. No buts. Verse 10. But. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. He was abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. To which I was appointed a preacher 
an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Wow. Powerful. Amen? It's a holy calling. It's a divine call. We are living for, uh, for a higher level of divine call and purpose now. And so many times we, we begin to drift from that. Because that's what the enemy likes to do. He likes to get us all caught up in everything in the world and family affairs and this affair and that affair and financial affair and this, uh, you know what I'm saying? And then we begin to lose that. It begins to drift. It begins to get erased and faded. And that's why it's so important that we assemble to be refreshed in these things, to be reminded we need one another to keep it going. Amen? And re in the Word. Holy Spirit's always bringing things to our remembrance. Hey, don't forget this. Don't forget that. We should tell me about that, about my keys. <laughs> don't forget your keys. He does tell me sometimes about my keys, but, you know, sometimes it's like, anyway. I say, Lord, when did you tell me about my keys? He said, I did. It's like, oh, I forgot. Ephesians 4, verse 1. But speak it, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Worthy. Amen? Worthy. Walk worthy of the purpose of your calling. I'm going to say it again. Walk worthy of of the purpose of your calling. With all what? Loneliness, verse 2, that means humble. And gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Wow. Walk worthy of the purpose of your calling as an ambassador, as a servant, as a steward, amen, for, of the kingdom of Christ. Walk worthy. In other words, there's got to be... In that area of worthy, it means faithful. Are you consistent? First Peter chapter two, verse nine. Let's speak it. But you are what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now has obtained mercy. Amazing. Called out of a false reality into the true reality. Again, your existence and my existence to fulfill his purpose. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. Now then we are what? Ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In him. Oh, yes. We are ambassadors, representatives. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. 
that a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ or servants to the anointing. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in steward that one be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord, because he's got a relationship. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. <laughs> God is our judge. We are to be servants of the anointed and stewards of the true reality. That's the mysteries. What is the mysteries? It's the true reality. So we're to be stewards of the true reality of the kingdom of Christ. This is our kingdom call. Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And that is happening right now. It first must come down. All corruption must be exposed and dismantled. Then it's turned over to the kingdom of God. Amen. Not only, uh, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Why does, still want, why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance or endurance. Amen. The sufferings of this reality are not compared to the calling of his kingdom of the true reality. Amen. Remember, God has made a way of escape from the matrix. It will collapse. It's collapsing right now. Babylon is falling. And the only way you can really begin to start the fall of Babylon is through taking its currency away. So they've been busted for counterfeiting for a long time. Things are coming down right now, big time. Countries are refusing to use U.S. dollars. It's no longer backed by gold. Countries are buying gold and silver like crazy. They'll, their countries will now be valued by what they have. Do you know that, the, um, you know, like I Iraq and places like that, even though it has oil, but it was burning like $10 million of natural gas a day because they couldn't sell it because of the market, because all the, 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 the demonic forces and so forth had taken lands over all the place. That's why all the gold now has been return, is returning now to the rightful countries that own it, that have been stolen, like Nebuchadnezzar. Solomon's gold, all of them. Even the Vatican had to unload all their gold, what they stole. Money laundering operation of the world. I mean, there's so many things that are happening and being restored now. Christ's kingdom, the kingdom call is being fulfilled like never before. We might not see it all out in front of us, but it's happening behind closed doors. There are arrests going on. There's probably executions going on that we don't even know about. There's a lot of things. But it's going to come to light. They're going to begin to, you know, right now think about this, that they've got to take over all of the media because that's what's really interfering. Communications is really the, the deception. People are believing the wrong. And people are so deceived. So without the Holy Spirit, they can't discern nothing. 
So they just rely on CNN and MSNBC and all the demonic news media and even the newspapers. I didn't even think they know they printed it anymore. You know? <laughs> Did they really print a newspaper still? Who the heck buys them? <laughs> they must use the clean windows and, and for training animals. Hallelujah. <laughs> First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Hmm. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Why? Here's his purpose. Amen? Does everybody see this? It says, for this purpose or for his purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. So what's our purpose? The same thing. Amen? Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Powerful. Turn to Jude. Jude 1. Verse 1. Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To those who are what? Called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that happening now? Amen. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe or did not what? Follow. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, what angels are those? The ones that put on flesh and went into women. Amen. But left their own abode he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when contending with him, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally. 
like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit and perish in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feast while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Now think about this, twice dead. Hmm. Remember that the Lord destroyed in the flood. Amen? And they will be destroyed again. Does everybody get it? So their bodies went back to dust, but their spirits roamed. So those spirits are always looking for a body. That's what's called demons. Disembodied spirits are what are demons. They're not angels with a disembodied spirit. The angels are bound. Amen? So when people tell me, well, the uh, angel is now a demon. No, that's not, not true. It's not scriptural at all. Angels cannot become demons. It's impossible. God binds them. He doesn't allow that to happen. Even Lucifer will not become a demon. Amen? <laughs> he won't become a demon. He's a fallen angel. They are principalities and powers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. They rule over nations and states and counties and things to that degree. They are over the foot soldiers, which are demons. And demons enter people. And then these, and those who worship darkness and have never come out in, of darkness into the light, they still serve themselves and servants of darkness because they have false promises and they believe the promises of, of Satan who is the father of all lies, isn't he? So this is what we're seeing all over. Everything is just being exposed. And now many people are awakening out of the darkness who have served darkness for many years. In fact, their families have served darkness. They were satanic worshipers. And we're, we're seeing testimonies now where these individuals who have been as little children caused to kill. Their families would produce their own children and sacrifice them. And now some of the things are coming to re their remembrance after putting things, you know, under the rug or uh, uh, deep within them and not bringing, not remembering them, under mind control and things to that degree. And now they're coming out as witnesses and telling the truth of their families and so forth. You know, God warned us about all the, the, the fake Jews. I mean, think about this. These were, he said, they're the, um, they're of a satanic Satan's kingdom, sanctuary. He said they're fake. They call themselves Jews, but they're not Jews. So what do you think all the Rothschild, Rockefellers, fan, all of these people that are supposedly Jews are not Jews. They're Satan's kingdom. And they are worshipers of Satan. And they sacrifice their own children. It's sick. And that's how they maintain power, because they must shed human blood to maintain right standing with Satan's kingdom. Is everybody okay? So what we're re reading right here in Jude is all about them. They are clouds without water, carried about with winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up in their own shame, wandering stars. Of whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men. Also saying, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. We will be a part of that. We will see it. Amen. Go to Matthew 6, please. Verse 31.
Therefore, do not what? Worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the what? Kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I'm going to close it. Matthew 6, verse 8. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Kingdom call. Remember, you and I exist to fulfill his purpose, not our own. Amen. When we begin to drift is when the enemy becomes it starts to come in. So we must remind each other. Amen. Don't drift from the call. Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you. We ask that you seal your word tonight in each and every one of us and bring it to remembrance in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give somebody a hug. Help you.